people have said some pretty crazy things about Nintendo and their opinions on this or that within that sphere of topics. And today, I'm combining all those together from both the Twitter audience and the YouTube people. We're combining both of these super spicy hot takes for one interesting video. So let's get started with the craziest Nintendo hot takes out there. Oh, Austin, before we get started, you're probably like, why does she look like a drowned rat? It's because I didn't put on makeup because it's like the end of the day and I'm exhausted and I'm busy. So I was like, am I going to look bad? Yeah. Is that fine? Hopefully. Hopefully you guys aren't superficial enough to just be here because of my looks. I don't really know what it would be of my looks. Maybe my face because you guys haven't even seen anything else, even though I'm a thick... <laughs> I put out a community poll asking people, what Nintendo opinion has you like this? And it's the Flood Rider, obviously. So, the first one I want to start with is Donkey Kong 64 is the best Donkey Kong game and Super Mario Sunshine is the best 3D Mario game. I just want to talk about the first thing. Donkey Kong 64 being the best Donkey Kong game is a criminal statement. Donkey Kong 64 is garbage. There is like a horrible objective system. It's impossible to play nowadays. And even back then it was a bad game. But if you try to play that goddamn Forsaken game today, it's going to give you a heart attack because it's so poorly made. Think about this. How many 2D Donkey Kongs have we had? A ton, because the original SNES era was so successful, they recaptured that with Donkey Kong Country Returns, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is also the, like one of the best platformers ever made. And so to say that Donkey Kong 64 is better than that is just an outright lie and a delusion. And my guy, if you're delusional, that's okay. But yeah, you're definitely wrong. You're definitely wrong. I mean, there's no option around this because... I can understand someone even saying, like, Donkey Kong Country on the SNES is actually my favorite Donkey Kong. And, and that's the best, right, to them. That can make sense because it's actually sort of a good game under there. I would disagree. I think that Tropical Freeze is the best. But I can also, like, understand that perspective. Your perspective here makes no f***ing sense. We got Jazz with uh, Donkey Kong 64 was also a good game. You guys, you guys and your crazy opinions. So Dami gives us Metroid Dread is not a good Metroid game. I've seen this comment a few times, so it's not even like the most original of takes, and I'm, sh I'm not, sh you know, dogging you for that. I'm saying that a lot of other people do seem to have this opinion, but it's because Metroid Dread isn't like, in my head, people that don't like Metroid Dread, what they want from Metroid is just suffer. Just suffering for, like, 30 hours. Suffering through the game. Not being able to do anything. They want that original Metroid game from the NES to just be what Metroid is. And I cannot thank Nintendo enough for moving away from that. Super Metroid. I have my grievances with it. But it fixed a lot of those things. But it's so open-ended. It's so free-spirited. Go wherever you want. Explore. Do this. Break the game. Blah, blah, blah. There's no direction. So if you're not a, you know, for lack of a better term, a maniac, and you have all the time in the world, if you want to sit down and play a cohesive game... You're not going to get that with many of those early Metroid entries. Then we get to the later ones with Fusion. It starts to give us a little bit of direction here. Zero Mission, I haven't played it, but what, from what I've heard, that also gives you some direction. So I'm thinking here, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Dobby, but it seems like you just want the game to suck. And if you want Metroid to suck and not do well, freaking don't give us any direction don't help us at all. But even the graphics and the moveset in Metroid Dread is beyond amazing. So I don't really understand or can comprehend how people don't like that game. I, the thing that also gets me stuck up here is like, maybe you just don't like Metroid and that's fine because Metroid definitely isn't for everyone. So maybe that's the thing. But if you're saying Metroid is not a good Metroid game, like you like other games in the franchise that you wish Metroid Dread was as good as, even though it is probably the best in the franchise. Fusion is pretty close. Fusion might be number one. I might be lying to you guys, but Dread is a beggar. Speaking of Super Metroid, like we just did, Super Metroid has horrible controls and is overrated by Dark Speed. Now, Dark Speed, I agree. I completely agree. I said this in my review. I said this in my review that the controls do not age well. And that 
it is so criminally overrated because everyone is like, you have to play Super Metroid. It's the best game of all time. It doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold up at all. It's it's fine. The graphical things are good. But if you're going in there expecting a good time, Super Metroid is going to slap you in the ass and uh, send you on your way because it's not a good time. Unless you're experienced with Metroid games and you can start to see the patterns, which now I can, but after Super Metroid was my second ever Metroid game. It was crazy. I wanted to blow my head off. Oh, this one was funny. Kirby the Forgotten Land is greater than Super Mario Odyssey by 7783. <laughs> so this is bizarre to me because Odyssey is getting all this like resurgence of hate for no reason. It's all the popular games on the Switch. This is what happens to them. Everybody loves them and then they get just shit on for like the rest of their life, even though they're good games. So Odyssey is beyond amazing. Kirby is beyond amazing. I adore both of these games, to be completely honest with you guys. However, they're like in different leagues. Odyssey is a refinement and a just creative boom of all of these different things and of everything great about Mario you can do in Odyssey. Yes, there's, there's places to grow. There's things they could have done better, but this is an amazing game, especially first playthrough. I can see like second or third playthrough, you know, you're a little over it. However, the first playthrough of Odyssey, I will say is magical. And I love that first playthrough a lot more than our throat goat, as RGT says, of Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Now, I love Kirby and the Forgotten Land, so that's not even me saying that it's a bad game, but that is me saying that it's definitely not the same league. You can sort of compare, you know, Kirby the Forgotten Land to like Mario 3D World. Those are comparable, sort of. And like then I would be like, oh yeah, I can see how some people would think that Kirby the Forgotten Land is better. And I would almost, honestly agree with that, but Odyssey is almost in a league of its own. Kirby cannot compete with that level. And it, eventually, maybe it can, but this is Kirby's first foray into 3D. So very incorrect opinion, very bad take, uh, but thanks for putting it out there. This one comes from us from C... Ooh, I'm not even gonna try it, it ends with Nog. Nintendo has carried this generation. I completely agree. I think Nintendo has honestly carried gaming for a very long time. Hear me out. Every company has their merits. I love Xbox, I love PlayStation, and I love Nintendo. So they are all great companies that do amazing things. But the Switch, it creates a new medium of what is possible in gaming. Hybrid consoles. The Wii created flipping motion control. The N64 created Rumble. NES, it brought gaming back, at least in North America, from this huge crash. Game Boy started handheld stuff. The 3DS, it gave us 3D and games. It didn't last, but that was a cool try. Nintendo is always like doing new things that the rest of the companies see the success and then they follow. Everyone else is a follower as compared to Nintendo, at least in my opinion. And I think that it's evident, especially in this generation, they have carried the generation. The Switch is the newest idea, the freshest thing to come to gaming for the last while, and they have consistently put out beggars almost every single month for this console, first party wise. This is, this is literally first party for six years. Microsoft and Sony can't can't even hold a candle to that amount of success. So yeah, I actually completely agree with you, my guy. Good take. This one comes from us, from Jen, who says Animal Crossing is boring. Now, <laughs> is Jen wrong? No, he's not. He's very, he's right. But I think Animal Crossing, I disagree because I feel that if you create, like, you have to create the game for yourself. So, like, you need to want to do things in the game to start working towards those things to make it more of a game for yourself. You're going to catch fish because it's going to make you money because you want this piece of furniture. And then you're going to get this piece of furniture after you expand your house and do this and this and this. And, oh, you you want this villager, so we have to get a bunch of Nook Miles tickets. Then once we get those tickets, we can go and we can fly and we can find a new villager. So that is really cool. And I love that aspect of the game, but I can totally see. And I... I understand the other side of being like, no, this is so boring. It's just everyday life and it's a little bit gamified 
and it's nothing. To be fair, I haven't even really gone back to Animal Crossing since COVID because I feel like during then, it was a nice sense of normal almost because it's like, oh, I'll do my daily activities that I used to do in real life in Animal Crossing and it'll be good time. Uh, but since then, you know, things have changed. We're back, so it's not quite like that. But I just have very fond memories with it. I think the game is amazing. And I think that if you want the game to be fun, you will make it fun. But if you go in having this mindset that, yeah, it's kind of boring, it's kind of mundane, that's how you're going to feel about it. Uh, but Jen is also one of my mods and he has a YouTube to check him out if you want. Thank you for being a mod, Jen. I appreciate you. This one got the most likes when I posted this to my community tab, so I'm just gonna read this one. There is no Zelda timeline, even with Hyrule Historia. The timeline is BS from Seth. My brother's name is Seth, so shout out. Love you. Um, but I agree completely. I've never bought into the timeline. I, to tell you the truth, I don't care enough about Zelda to buy into the timeline. People want this to exist, so they string it together to make themselves, you know, feel better about it. And it's, it's a cool thing, uh, but it is definitely not real. And Nintendo doesn't give two shits about it, so I completely agree. All right, the last of the YouTube is that Tears of the Kingdom is not deserving of Game of the Year. This comes from Tom. Tom, who do you want win on this thing? Baldur's Gate, the game where you can bang a bunch of bears. Okay. Starfield, the emptiness of space really gets to you. Wonder, Mario Wonder, maybe I guess like you want to be different and you're like, I'm so different. I like need Mario Wonder, which is cool. Like that's a different opinion. But like if Tears of the Kingdom isn't deserving of game of the year after being an amazing game that refined everything that Breath of the Wild did, what is? Like, to say that you don't want Tears of the Kingdom to win Game of the Year, fair. Also, let's be clear, I think Game of the Year is pretty stupid, and it just doesn't really actually matter at all. But this game is very, very deserving of at least, like, being a nominee for Game of the Year. Maybe it isn't deserving of, like, how did you wear this? Tears of the Kingdom is not deserving of Game of the Year. So, like, of winning Game of the Year or of being nominated, I guess is what you're saying. Because, like, I can see you wanting a different game to win, but saying that it's not deserving to be the Game of the Year, the possible Game of the Year, is obscene. It's it's one of the best games of the last decade. You're a maniac. But if we're going to move over now on to Twitter, now called X, as I uh, also asked over there, if you don't know, you can also follow me on Twitter, Josie Woe. Uh, come, come hang out over there. It's a good time. This comes from Rob of Rule of Two Review. Rob is a great content creator, someone I've looked up to for years, and I think it's really cool that he's commenting now. But Rob says, the Wii U was good, very good, and was the gamepad, and more people should have bought and supported it. I agree. I loved my Wii U. I absolutely adored it, but I, but I can also like sort of understand why this thing failed. It's a big hunk of meat, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And it's definitely like not what Nintendo needed coming off the Wii. It was another huge gimmick and people had at that point bought out of it. And on top of which the marketing was like, this is great for kids, every kid needs this. And even kids are like, I don't wanna, I'm not that kid, man. Like, don't, don't group me in there. So I think that was also part of it. I think there was just a lot of failure going into the Wii U and there wasn't a consistent library. There was a great library after the fact that all got ported to the Switch, uh, but that initial library wasn't anything super duper special and they kind of continued to disappoint while the 3ds was their breadwinner so they had that uh to sort of latch on to i think is what what really happened there and the last one is from click to a large another content creator uh i used to do this podcast with him so check him out as well but it says the last two zelda titles are overrated everybody says this and actually nick i completely disagree i don't think they are I think there is a reason they are banging so hard. They are such good games because they take Zelda and they make it for everyone. Something that Zelda was so not about, you know, in the early games. And it makes it relevant as well. I have tons of friends who don't give two shits about video games, but they want to play Breath of the Wild. They want to play Tears of the Kingdom. There's a lot of praise to those games. And I see that people, you know, they're pushing back against that praise a little bit because there are things that, you know, the games do wrong and there's things that aren't fantastic. Maybe we could have a better story. Maybe we could have a more cohesive world or, or a more filled in world. But at the end of the day, I don't think they're overrated at all. I think they're very fairly rated because they both slap and they're both bangers and maybe I'm just a loser and feel that way about Zelda. And I also, let's, let's, 
let's listen to this. I got in to Zelda through Breath of the Wild, and then I went back and played the old ones. So, I mean, well, I've... I don't want this to, like, cross-reference with my Zelda videos, so I have played Wind Waker, and I have played some of the other games before, but I didn't actually love them. And then after I played Breath of the Wild, I was like, oh, I like Zelda, and then I went back and then actually played those games. So, don't think you you got me, because you did it. On here, there's a lot of, like like oh zelda's blah 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 there's a lot of zelda people there's a lot of people talking about the pokemon company uh but these are this is the biggest hot take bonanza i've ever seen i posted this and i just wanted to see other people's opinions so thank you to everyone for commenting i want to call out oj player essence real quick because he did say how are you going to do an engagement mate tweet and not actually get monetized on here lol because i'm gonna make a fucking banger video watch this video get like 500 views <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Subscribe if you're still here. I mean, it's awesome. I appreciate you guys. Again, sorry about the no makeup thing. Bareface bitch time. Uh, but I will see you in this video. This is a lot of cussing. I usually don't cuss this much. But I think it's fair, you know? It's a, it's a hot take video. So I'm going to get a little saucy in here. But yeah, check out the video. It's a banger. It's a vibe. It's a good time. And I will see you over there. Thank you so much.